Democracy Now! We're broadcasting from Los Alamos, New Mexico, the birthplace of the nuclear age. I'm Amy Goodman. The atomic bombs used in World War II were designed and developed here. Well, today, some residents of New Mexico are trying to atone for the history of war. We turn right now to Mike Reynolds, at the forefront of those who are creating more sustainable ways of living, is the visionary once architect Michael Reynolds. He's creating radically sustainable living options through a process called Earthship Biotexture. The solar homes are created from natural and recycled materials, including aluminum cans, plastic bottles, and used tires. These off-the-grid homes minimize their reliance on public utilities and fossil fuels by harnessing their energy from the sun, also from wind turbines. We were driving along from uh, Durango, Colorado, to Taos, New Mexico, when we saw this remarkable collection, a fascinating collection of structures scattered through the sagebrush along the road. We pulled over and found Mike Reynolds consulting with a carpenter. He brought us into one of the first houses he built. He's been documented in a documentary called Garbage Warrior, and he gave us a tour of one of the sustainable living homes he created. Greenhouse, which is a buffer zone for the house to make the house uh, stay warmer, hold its heat longer. Uh, the plants eat the sewage and provide food, and so it just creates a whole different environment, a, a tropical environment out of the super cold desert, high desert environment. So the house is a jungle? Yeah, it's pretty much mostly 50% a jungle. Uh, we usually have bananas. We just harvested bananas here. Uh, this is uh, uh, tilapia. You can fish here. My eight-year-old my eight -year -old grandson just did it on camera. He caught a fish here in like uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> and we grow them for protein. We have chickens out there. And uh, so we're, the idea with this is to show that you can produce food uh, as, as enough to stay alive and what in your in, own home. What is in these uh, pillars of the house? Uh, this, this is just holding up this little chamber up here that's going to be a hot tub. And what are these materials? Though? Those are just beer cans laid in cement. And like bottles. Like bricks. Beer cans and bottles. And why and beer cans and bottles? Because they're natural bricks that every, they're indigenous to the entire planet. And they're all over the world. But this is the, see this, this stays this temperature year round, no matter what. This uh, is sort of a moist, warm, cool, air. Yeah. all at once. In the wintertime, this feels warm. In the summertime, it feels cool. And this is made with the back? All the walls are made with all these interior walls, except for some of them are cans, but most of the walls are the tires pounded with earth. And why tires? Because tires are indigenous to the entire planet. When you beat dirt into them, they hold temperature and stabilize, stabilize the temperature, basically. And so all the back walls are made of these tires. And where do you get tires? Uh, from the tire stores. They have to pay to take them to the dumps. How many tires are there? Where do you... I mean, oh, there, there's... We have a deal with the county. We have thousands of tires. Hello? My goodness, we're going into the bathroom right now. Hello? Okay, we're going to go in and out. Again. Okay, we're going into the bathroom. Can you describe this bathroom to us? Well, the bathroom is just it's sort of in the jungle. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sculpted bathtub. The toilet flushes into the uh, septic system, which runs back into the planters, and the planters use it all. The so why does it stink? Totally contained. Well, it's biology. Sewage doesn't have to stink if you understand biology. Like, there's a lot of things in, in nature that are really rancid, but nature takes care of it. And we're just taking nature's advice on how to deal with sewage rather than jumping raw sewage into a bay or an ocean. Does this break rules? Uh, oh, yeah. What are the rules it breaks? Every one of them. <laughs> it's just there, there are codes and rules. Now, we got variances, and we've got things in place. But uh, uh, the, the, the codes and rules are so stringent and so rigid that they are... They make it so we have to evolve very slowly as we try to break uh, these, try to uh, uh, evolve these rules. 
And we, this, we're on a planet now that is changing rapidly, and humans have to evolve rapidly to be able to stay alive on this planet. And the rules and the codes keep us from evolving rapidly. And I was pushing it too hard. That's why they took my license. I'm trying to get us evolving faster. Yeah, I might make a mistake, and there might be a smell or something. But look at the mistakes they made with atomic energy. You know, that's killing people and destroying the, the continents. So it, You're not far from Los Alamos. I'm not far from Los Alamos, and, and I'm doing a hell of a lot less damage. Tell us about the bedroom for a minute. The bedroom is just, uh, it's so, see, the bedroom is, look how many glass faces. One, two, three, when these doors close, three glass faces away from the outside. And it's wrapped with mass. So this bedroom just stays comfortable all the time. So we around. have the bedroom, then we have a set of glass doors, then we have doors, a then forest. A, another set of glass doors. And, and one jungle, then another jungle, and another set of glass doors. So half of it is, uh, half of it is glass. So, um, so the quote that you have in the visitor center. Well, they have a movie. They made a movie about this called Garbage Warrior. Uh, and it did good in film festivals. I didn't make it. Somebody made it. And they spent four years following us around. And it was on... It was being screened in uh, Toronto or Vancouver or someplace, and there was 900 people there, and they gave the movie a standing ovation, and then they started a Q&A, and they got into discussing everything and why we were doing it and everything, and, and, uh, and I was just uh, asked a question, and I just blurted it out. I didn't really think. And what I blurted out was uh, if all of the soldiers in all of the armies in all of the world were to put down their weapons and pick up tools and start making sustainable housing for all the people in the world, life would just begin on this planet. And I didn't really know what I had said, but they wrote it down. The material up here? Uh, this scrap metal and, and uh, wood and, you know, we use wood and, and cement and, and some, you know, the buildings are 45% recycled materials, I would say. Tell me one more time about being near Los Alamos and what that means, the birthplace well, of the nuclear age. <clears throat> it's, it's, it really helped me get this law passed because New Mexico was the state that, that destroyed 10,000 acres to test the atomic bomb. And Los Alamos is over there doing major, major damage for, for I guess it's for national security is basically what it is. And I'm, I'm seeing that uh, from doing this, and I do this all over the world, that if everybody has everything they need, there won't be anybody fighting over anything. Everybody will have everything they need. And this is a way to show people a path of how to get. It's a lot of work. You have to go through a lot of work to get this, but it's a pathway to everything that you need, not dependent on corporations, fossil fuels, governments, oil, anything. You can get everything you need in this in this house. Four people could live here and stay alive. So were you as popular 10 years ago in the United States? You say you're building this all over the world, but what about in the no, United States? I went through a long period of being a turd in the punch bowl because it's like... Uh, it was it was too many you know garbage. It's a there's a stigma around garbage. There's a stigma around sewage, and we're making them into uh, a building and and into your living room. And so yeah, it wasn't very popular at first, but it's it, it now it's like the world is changing so fast that people are starting to recognize anything is better than say a nuclear power plant in Japan that's destroying a whole continent. Uh, anything is better than the food that comes in the trucks. Uh, you know that is grown for money, that is full of chemicals. The food that's grown here, you can pick it and eat it. You can graze. You know, I, at lunch, I go into the different buildings and pick tomatoes or cucumbers or our, our plant girl makes salads from the buildings. We, you can live. Uh, you won't get fat, but you can live from these buildings without needing anything. And if you could imagine uh, the billions of people on this planet living without needing anything, it would be a whole different planet. So, Mike Reynolds, you lost your architecture license 10 years ago? How about that? Yeah. It was, it was a controversy over 
breaking of rules, not following codes and regulations. I was kind of sensing, a, a sen uh, you know, feeling a sense of urgency in trying to make sustainable housing happen faster. And I got, you know, I worked with the officials, but uh, uh, some of them died and retired and things like that. And all of a sudden, new officials came in, and I was breaking every rule in the book. So why didn't you just stop? Well, I didn't, I didn't want to stop. Uh, turns out that I can go further faster without being an architect. Uh, as an architect, you can get fined for breaking rules and codes and regulations. Like what codes you break? Well, like like not doing sewage the way it is is supposed to be done in the regulation books, which is go into a septic tank and go out of the septic tank into the ground and and contaminate the ground and the groundwaters. That's what's supposed to be done. And uh, sewage going into every, every city in, in the world, pretty much, has got sewage going into rivers, streams, bays, uh, poor treatment of sewage. We're trying to contain the sewage on site and treat it. And it, that's not allowed. That's simply not allowed. You have to put it into the ground. And so, and then furthermore, we're taking part of it through the living room, you know, so Why that's not allowed. Room? Well, the, the, all the brooms, because it makes, it goes into botanical cells, which grow plants, and the plants give you oxygen in the rooms and food. And so part of the, any part of the house is considered living, and if the sewage is being treated in the house, that was taboo. Where do you get the water from? So we get the water from the sky. Uh, rain and snowfall, and we use it four times. We use the water for taking a shower, and then we use the water for running through the botanical cells growing plants, and then we collect it again at the end of the botanical cell and flush the toilet with that same water, and then that water gets treated in a septic or anaerobic uh, system, and then it, go it overflows into more botanical cells that are used for landscaping. So the, in the end, no water ever leaves the premises that came from the sky. If you're not an architect, what are you? I Well, when they wouldn't let me use the word architect anymore, I invented the word biotexture instead of architecture. And I use it all over the world now because architecture is really not standing up to the, the demands of the day. And so we wanted to create another profession that will address the demands of the day. Architecture is too wrapped up in itself to evolve. And it's not, and, it, and, and consequently, it's making buildings that architects are making buildings that require $18,000 worth of fuel a month to keep them comfortable. How much do people spend here on monthly utility bills? If they pay over 100 we pay it for them. Over 100 what? Per year. Total annual utility bill, $100. How do you get away with not paying utility bills? There is no utilities. The, the electricity comes from the sun. The water comes from the sky. The sewage is treated on site. Uh, it's everything is by encountering the natural phenomena of the earth. You have everything you need, and you don't need utilities. The utilities are bad because they are, they mine the earth for fuels and make nuclear power plants. But just as bad as that is the infrastructure that they use to deliver the utilities, and then they're all run by corporations and so on. So it, the people are vulnerable. This building, the people that live here are not vulnerable. They are a, a free people to to exist no matter what happens to the economy or, or anything. The go houses go back into the earth as if they're coming out of the earth. They, yeah, they, you're embracing, the, the earth is embracing the buildings, pretty much like a, a mother holds a baby. The earth is holding the building because the earth is a source of temperature. Uh, just a few feet below the, sur uh, the surface of the earth is a constant temperature. And we're tapping into that temperature and then actually auxiliarating it with the sun. And yet you also are building tall row house like um, earth ships. We're doing that because uh, there is such a, a global interest in these and uh, they're, they're one of the things they're saying is that these are great for rural areas but uh, they wouldn't work in an urban circumstance. So we're trying to demonstrate that you can do two and three story row housing using these same concepts and they'll work every bit as So you're building... Mike Reynolds calls himself a biotech. You can go to earthship.com. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We were speaking on the road into Taos, and that does it for our broadcast. Special thanks to Suzanne Mitchell, Steve Clapp, Dave Sosno, Karen Renucci, Dennis Moynihan, and Chuck Skirich. Our election 2012 silence majority tour continues today in Los Alamos, right here in the Fuller Lodge. We'll be speaking at 1130. At 6 tonight, we'll be in Albuquerque at the University of New Mexico. On Friday, we'll be at Western New Mexico.